Mmm, that's nice. That's fruity. I don't think that you should be a writer. In fact, I ask you to never write again. The must take a stand against oh, the LGBTQ community. I hate to put that out. I had you looking in the wrong section. How could I be so stupid? There it is. That's what I was waiting for. That's what I was slapping on. No! <laughs> Take them titties out cause I'm trying to see them AM to the PM double did them and I need them If you spelled applesauce with a B You can call that applesauce You just got slayed. Slayed. A slice of pomegranate in there as well. No, darling, it's not pomegranate. What do you actually think it is? Give it another oh, guess. It's a grapefruit. Yes, there we go. I don't know my fruits. So I was just looking at my copy of the trans agenda, and in the newest edition, it says that all trans people are now hot and cool. I don't disagree. It's hard to be humble when you're 235 pounds of twisted steel and sex appeal with a body women love and men fear. She said, and you know what? I, what was that? Okay, James. I don't know. I, I guess I'm not woke. Okay, fine. You win with your gay stuff. That's what you want, right? To win. I'm gay. Why would I want to straighten this? Nice. We got some new cereals. Let's see what we got. We got some peanut butter, some cocoa, you, and Frosted. You look like a freaking fanook. That's a long-winded way of calling me a homosexual. Okay, you ready? On three, tell me what your favorite color is. One, two, three. If you said green, you're a homosexual. No, little German boy, don't think about your gender. Mein Gott, I am feeling uncomfy with the he's and himmens. Same, little German person. Fucking same. Here's a list of things that say you're gay. One, the mirror. Two, me. You're gay. However, comma, none of those factors about me means I want to be a man. Oh, it sure does. Oh, man, does it ever. Oh, man, you're not gonna believe this. Are you? Five foot two? Absolutely not. Five foot four. Five foot three. Five foot three. Kevin? Five foot two and a half. I'm five foot two. Five foot two. Let's try to tell the truth. Yeah, five foot two. No! Little German boy! To walk into that gay club! Oh! Oh my god, this club is full of Yasin Queenen! 
One of my friends still slips up and misgenders me, and as they did not heed my warning and instead heed me, I keyed their car. JK, I set it on fire. Remember, it's not arson if you're not a son. I committed our daughter. Get your gay crimes right, everyone. Ding. <laughs> Today, one of my coworkers was looking at my lesbian tattoo and was like, oh, what does this mean? I'm like, I'm gay. And she was like, I used to be gay. Used to? What happened? Did your membership expire? All of the first five men that I ever kissed that I had a panic attack immediately after kissing them for the first time are probably real surprised that I still have not come out as a lesbian. I... I've looked into it, trust me. I did extensive research, but no, we're not there yet. We're doing this. We're doing this. <laughs> Look right there and ask him. If I told you I was working on a sapphic urban fantasy version of Sherlock Holmes that combined slow burn romance and cozy murder mystery, would that be of interest to you? Yes. Yes, it would be of interest to me. I am asking that. Yes, please. <laughs> Being gay was the worst financial decision of my life. Like, I'm trying to save money, and then boom. I buy a 900-page book just because I know there's lesbians in it. And then I buy two more books, too, because I also know they've got lesbians in them. What the fuck is wrong with me? <laughs> so I just went and got a haircut uh, just now, and I've been seeing the same guy for... Like two and a half years and every time i see him like every six weeks or so i he's like watched me present a little more i don't know a little different every time and so today i've got the like girlfriend collective bra as binder situation happening and he goes are you wearing a binder and i was like no i mean it's a bra but like it I, yeah i guess it's kind of a it's kind of a binder it's definitely a binder uh because i have a small chest and it works for me <laughs> and he goes I was just no. It's I was just asking if you wanted to go like super masculine with your haircut. Um, if that's something you want to do this time, and I guess uh, the moral of the story is get yourself a queer hairstylist if you're queer <laughs> because it's great. <laughs> Did you know that the Mona Lisa may not have been a woman, but in fact, a Leonardo da Vinci's male lover? That's right, we may be seeing the world's most famous painting all wrong. The Mona Lisa with her mysterious smile has captivated art lovers for centuries and historians have constantly wondered who the elusive model was. The dominant theory is that the real Mona Lisa was Lisa Grandi, the wife of a wealthy Florentine merchant. But thanks to new infrared technology, a new theory has emerged and the subject might have been da Vinci's young male lover, Gian Giacomo Caprotti, whom da Vinci names the meaning little devil. Da Vinci used the lie as a model in many of his works, including this homoerotic representation of John the Baptist. See the resemblance? The theory has come up throughout history and has always been shut down, but art detective and Mona Lisa expert Silvano Vincenti is sure of it. Plus, the answer may have been staring us in the face all along. Mona Lisa is an anagram. Rearrange the letters and you get this. Let's talk about Pixar's turning red. Let's talk some more about what just came out. Disney execs have purposefully cut out queer content from the movies. That is a direct quote. Even if creating LGBTQIA plus content was the answer to fixing discriminatory legislation in the world, we are being barred from creating it. I talked about it on my podcast episode that's dropping this Friday, but like, it's so fucking disappointing to see because you can see exactly where they cut it off even in turning red. And I explicitly discussed it there. But, like, even when there's a good piece of representation for marginalized folks, they're still fucking us over behind the scenes. We can never just win. Hi, everyone. This is uh, Dana Terrace, the creator of The Owl House. And if you've been following my timeline, you know that Disney was recently found out to be donating large sums of money, hundreds of thousands of dollars, to the sponsors and co-sponsors of the Don't Say Gay Bill, a, a bill that effectively tells kids, LGBTQ plus kids, that you don't exist, you don't deserve to exist, and you shouldn't even be talked about. Shh. Well, we got, we got an email. We got a company-wide email this morning, uh, basically telling us, in summary, 
Disney as a company is not going to change doing any of this. We're not going to not give money to these people. But here are a bunch of flowery and compassionate words to shut you up. The email goes on to say, uh, I believe the, from Bob Chapek, I believe the best way for our company to bring about lasting change is through the inspiring content we produce and the diverse organizations we support. Yes, such diverse organizations as all the Republicans who want to out queer kids against their will and put them in danger. It's honestly hard to talk about this stuff. I'm someone who had a hard time coming to terms with my queerness until my mid-twenties because of stuff like this, because I thought I shouldn't exist, because no one even told me I had the option of existing. And man, I know I got bills to pay, but working for this company has been so, has made me so distraught and I hate, I hate having moral quandaries about how I feed myself and how I support my loved ones. So I'm going to put this video to an end. I'm and I'm going to end it by saying March 13th, we're doing a charity stream, um, twitch.tv at uh, slash Dana Terrace. We're going to do a charity stream that will go to support actual queer organizations to help actual queer kids. Um, and we're not just going to say pretty words to shut you up. So thank you. Hope to see you there and have a good day. You know, if you're a trans person in Berlin in the 1920s, you could have been issued with the transvestite pass. It's kind of like a whole pass, but for trans people. I'll explain. Enter Magnus Hirschfeld. He was a German Jewish sexologist and an advocate for homosexual and transgender rights. He created the Institute of Sexual Science, which pioneered research in gender and sexuality, hormone replacement therapies, and early gender affirmation surgeries. He used the word transvestite to describe those who cross-dressed as well as those we would now describe as transgender. And more importantly, he believed these people needed to be decriminalized, not cured. Cross-dressed wasn't explicitly a crime in Germany at this time. But if a trans person failed to pass, they could be arrested for being a public nuisance. To help, Magnus Hirschfeld and his institute issued documentation that allowed these gender diverse individuals to receive a transvestite pass, which let the police know that they were not cross-dressing public nuisances, but legitimate transvestites that should be allowed to go about their business freely. Sure, this sounds a little clunky to us today, but it does demonstrate to us just how progressive Germany was in the 1920s before the Nazi party took over. class let's go over our u.s presidents in order starting with jefferson then jackson van buren buchanan grant cleveland harrison cleveland again taft nixon and ford good job yes those are all the u.s presidents what's my favorite painting that's a great question it's probably the creation of man by nobody nobody painted it nobody posed for it Never, it's moving on, okay? Let's just talk about color theory, okay? Except I can't show you the color wheel, so. Now class, normally I would have my students read the works of Whitman, Wilde, Wolf, Capote, Shakespeare, Austin, Hemingway, any, any Greek works, really, um, but, you know what, this year, let's just read the great... Mm. Bail... Mm. The Lord of... Animal? The Catcher at... Mm. You know what, let's just, let's just get with the Scarlet Letter. Remember class, it is Mrs. Smith. Am I married? Um... No. No, I'm not. All right, band. Um, this year we are only performing the works of John Williams. No particular reason. Um, and just, just to be safe, uh, low brass, just remember six feet apart, okay? Uh, guard two, all right? Good job, guys. So unfortunately, we're not gonna be performing any plays this year. Um, I did think about A Raisin in the Sun, but you know, just, if these are the rules this year, um, we all we all know what's coming next, okay? 
Um, so just, you know what, just pretend that you're the only student in this class. Just don't even acknowledge each other. Just don't even, don't even look at each other. Don't, don't talk to each other. D separate, okay? Let's just sit in silence and pretend nobody else in this class exists, all right? Yeah, we're gonna have fun this year. <laughs>